Josh Pika and I am building a 52 foot Polynesian double voyaging canoe. So the canoe that I'm building, uh, it's been inspired by the Okeanos Vakamotu. So Okeanos Foundation uh, have built a few of these already. They have the 50 foot version and a 72 foot version. Um, I've extended the 50 foot version, made mine 52, not all that different. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen any plans or anything from the Vakamotu. I just, I've only seen photos. So uh, just whatever you can find on the internet, I'll put a few links in the description to Okeanos and to the Vakamotu page. So you can uh, see where I base my design on. But um, yeah, haven't seen any plans, official plans or anything like that. So um, I was looking through YouTube one day and found these um, Polynesian voyaging canoes. And as soon as I saw them, I watched every video I could find on YouTube and uh, yeah, every website I could find, I was looking at them and uh, yeah, I decided I had to have one. So uh, it's quite a different looking uh, boat, that's for sure. So the, this is just uh, one of the concept photos of the one that I'm building. Even uh, I myself, I don't really have any like uh, plans per se to build this boat. It's uh, mostly just, I've printed out a few templates. You'll see that in the, uh, in the first videos and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, based on the Okeanos, but a lot of changes to suit myself um, with like crew wise and that sort of thing. I won't be using the, uh, the crab claw sail. I'm going to do a twin gaff rig like the Warrams. So, um, yeah, the way that I'm going to do this is, um, I'm going to build the hull. Well, I've designed it, uh, symmetrically so I can make all four quarters out of one mold while well, it'll be three molds. So I've got the, uh, the mid section. So if I'll show you this here, I've got, uh, this is what I'm working on now between my two fingers. That's what I'm calling the midsection. That part there is exactly the same as that part there. So uh, I'll be able to use that mold four times. And then I just need to make two more molds, which will be the bow piece. And then I'll have a stern mold as well. So uh, yeah. I'm in the middle of building the male plug to make a female mold for this boat or just for the center section there. So that's where the videos will start off, me building that. Um, yeah, I'm going to build it in four quarters and then join the hulls together to make a 52 foot hull. Obviously it's catamaran or a double canoe, so there'll be two 50 foot hulls, 52 foot hulls. So, uh, the reason why I'm doing this, like I said, I saw the, uh, the videos on YouTube and just fell in love with this style of boat, but, uh, I've always dreamt of living on the water and, uh, this, uh, this just seems to be the way to go for me. I'm not, uh, really keen on the conventional life. So, uh, yeah, I'm just doing something a little bit out of the different, build my own boat and, uh, live on it. There's no set rules or anything like that. I'd love to cruise up and down the coast of Australia, just cleaning up, uh, cleaning up beaches and reefs and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, just get out there and start living. I'm the owner and skipper, or well, my family owns the uh, business that I work for here in Harvey Bay. That's Harvey Bay Whale Watch. So we go out between mid July and the end of October, uh, whale watching here in Harvey Bay. So I drive a 18.5 metre fast cat, quick cat two. Um, and yeah, that's my day job while the whales are here. And now that the whales are just about to leave, uh, I'm gonna be almost a full-time boat builder, hopefully, fingers crossed. So uh, yeah, that's a bit about uh, what I'm up to and how I'm doing it. 
So please like and subscribe and uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys a bit more and show you what I'm up to. So the start of the videos now, I have lost a bit of footage, which, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't know what uh, quite happened, uh, what happened here, but uh, I started recording on my phone and then uh, I switched to a GoPro, but uh, somehow when transferring the files from my phone to the computer, I lost some. So the first two or three videos might not uh, be completely joined together, but now that I got the GoPro, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's stitching itself together quite nicely. So um, yeah, apart from that, I hope you enjoy the build and I hope to talk to a lot of you throughout the build definitely professionals if you got any uh if you got any tips or hints and tricks i'd love to uh i'd love to hear them because uh, as i said I've, I've never done this before i've worked a bit with fiberglass on trailer sailors and uh like fishing boats and that sort of thing but never built a boat from scratch so i figured I might as well go in uh neck deep and build a big one so i'm going to keep doing that and I hope you guys stick around and watch the show. Thanks, guys. See you later. Just been uh, to the Bunnings warehouse. Got some MDF. We're going to cut out the templates of this new build. It's going to be just over 50 foot Polynesian double canoe of Vaka. So it's uh, roughly based on the Okeanos Vaka Motu. I've just uh, designed up my own patterns just off photos of the uh, Vakamotu off the internet. So that's what's on this big piece of paper here. I've got a, um, a sign writing business as well. So I had the big printer, the big paper. So I've printed up the, uh, the patterns. We're going to trace those onto the MDF sheets and cut them out. And uh, yeah, the frames are too big to fit on one sheet. So we're going to do half and half and join them together. And stand them up. So the way that I've designed this uh, this boat here is to um, build the boat symmetrically, front and back. Although it's going to have a different uh, nose cone and a different tail on it. So that means that I only have to build uh, three moulds. So it's going to be one half of the centre section and then a nose cone mold and a tail mold. So um, the center section will have a flange at the front, I guess you'd call it the front or the back, flange with bolt holes and then uh, we'll bolt the nose cone on and make two of those, bolt the tail cone on, make two of those and then join them together to make a 50 plus foot bucker. So uh, there's not really any plans to this just got the uh, the templates behind and uh, I've got a rough idea so it's pretty hard to see on the uh, on the paper here the lines are very fine but uh, I'll just give you a closer look so I only need four frames for this just for building the uh, the plug for the fiberglass mold all four frames are there, so I'll just uh, trace the larger one first, cut that section off, trace the, uh, the second one and so on. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it is using a dressmaker's wheel. It's got sharp pointy teeth, I'll show you in a second. Righty, so this is the uh, dressmaker's pinwheel. Let's see if we can get a focus there. So it's got uh, a bunch of sharp points there. So I've got all four, like I said, I've got all four templates on the uh, piece of paper here. That uh, section that's missing there, that's going to be a walkway through the uh, bulkheads for when I start cladding it, if I need to uh, get inside it at any point. Uh, so I'm just going to run this wheel up the, uh, up the outside on the first template and mark it onto the wood. Then I'll go through and trace, just join all these little dots together with a, uh, with a pencil and then cut it out with a jigsaw.
So the other half is just the same. So I've got the one that I've just cut out underneath this piece and I'm just gonna run a router with a uh, flush cut bit around it. And that'll give me an exact copy of the one that's underneath it. I can do it. So yesterday I finished all the frames off. They are in halves. So now I'm gonna uh, join them together with the pine. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly rip these pine studs in half. They don't need to be that thick. And uh, yeah, I'll just put uh, one across the bottom there to hold the bottom square. And then one just across the top of this cutout to uh, hold them together there. So uh, yeah, I'll just quickly rip these in half and start screwing them together. Once they're all screwed together, I'll be able to stand them up and get a rough gauge of what it's, uh, what it's gonna look like all standing up. Alright, oh, let's get into it. Alright, new idea. I was going to um, sort of strip plank these bulkheads to form the shape of the hull. And the way I was going to do that is by a big beam, 6 metres long, 240 wide by 45, and then just rip it um, into like 11 millimetre thick strips. 11 millimetre by 45, and then just, yeah, just like. Um, put them all together up the uh, up the side, but um, even just ripping that stuff before you can see they they're, they're uh, still full width. That uh, that new saw that I got it just kept tracking off on its own thing, and it was uh, it was just too hard to push through there, and I would have to do hundreds of cuts to get the 11 mil thick. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now <coughs> is just run uh, full length battens, probably uh, six on each one, and then I'm gonna sheet it with um, MDF with laminex on it. So it's probably better off doing it that way and I probably should have done it like that to start with because uh, the laminex, uh, the fiberglass doesn't even stick to laminex. So I've already got a finished ready to, uh, to go mold once I've screwed it all on and filled and uh, smoothed off the screw holes and that sort of thing and all the joins and seams. So uh, yeah, it's probably how I should have done it in the first place, but oh well, we, uh, we learn from these things. So uh, I don't have any of that at the moment, but uh, I'll run off to the wholesalers and grab some and uh, then yeah, we'll just notch out where the battens are going into the uh, into the templates here, so they're recessed and then sheet to the uh, to the outside of the bulkhead there. So uh, I might just make up a little jig that I can cut these uh, notches out in the bulkheads there, and uh, I won't do that until I actually physically have the uh, the timber because I'm not quite sure what they're going to have just yet. So. Uh, yeah, I'll go get the timber and then I'll start that plan. Alrighty guys, it's the next day now. Still feel like crap. Got a bit of a cold going on, but uh, we'll keep pushing on anyway. So, I've got the frame up now. I've only got three uh, battens in, one on each corner of the frame, one at the, uh, the center, the keel line there. So I just need to put uh, three more in on each side and that's just where the laminate sheeting will join. I'll put a batten there so it stays nice and uh, nice and flush and true. The uh, the laminate sheet um, has to be ordered in. Bunnings in Harvey Bay here didn't have any. They do have some in Maryborough. They uh, they couldn't tell me when the Harvey Bay ones were going to turn up. They reckon if it's going to turn up, it will be today, Friday, after lunch. So I might just uh, work on putting these battens in. And uh, yeah, I'll go to Harvey Bay Bunnings first after I get these battens in and just check if it has come in. If not, I might just go for a quick drive to Maribor. It's only 30 minutes away. And I'll, uh, I'll pick up those sheets. But uh, yeah, I'll come over and get the camera. I'll show you how I've been notching this, uh, notching these things out for the Battens. 
There it is. So I just cut a notch the size that I need out there. And I just measure on the thing where I, on the uh, template where I need it and screw it, screw this to there. And then I just use a router with a flush cut bit to, uh, to cut that out. It's just neater and quicker. And uh, yeah, so yeah, like I said, we've got three more battens on each template to run forwards. There may be a, an, a fourth one that will run just on the first three templates, not down to the front, just to support the middle. There's going to be like a little triangular piece there that, uh, that I'm going to have to put in. But uh, yeah, apart from that, we'll just get stuck in and hopefully that laminate sheet turns up in Harvey Bay, save a bit of driving. So the sheets are uh, 1220 wide, I'm going to be putting them across ways and just stopping them at each bulkhead so I can finish the edge on something. So uh, I'm just going to go along and I'm going to measure, measure 1220 up and screw that template on and round out and that will put the batten right on the centre of the uh, laminate sheet and then yeah I'll have the center of the vertical section run down the center of the template so they're all supported nice and evenly. I might have to screw some uh, little blocks either side of the the, uh, the bulkhead there just to screw the sheets to but uh, no big deal. I, uh, I bought one extra batten for that sort of thing just for cutting up but uh, yeah so it's going to be like uh, a 1220 sheet here and then over the top, I'm going to put uh, so from the center line 610 down on each side, and that will fit a whole sheet at the top there too. So if you can imagine, I'll show you one. I'll show you later once the battens are in. But uh, we're going to have a batten coming across here, one coming across here, and then there's going to, going to be like a triangular shape sort of thing that has to be filled in, which is what the middle batten will be for. Alright, so we might be going to Bunnings a bit earlier than we thought. I've just blown the bearing off the uh, end of the flush cutting bit in the router. So, I showed you the way that I was doing that with that little template and that won't work without the bearing on it. So, I'm just going to have to head off to the warehouse. I'm sure that that uh, laminate sheeting isn't there yet, but uh, we'll go see. Maybe. Maybe I'm lucky. Alrighty guys, we'll leave that episode there um, just before I sheet the frame. Hope you enjoyed the first episode. Like I said, I did lose a bit of footage, so it's a little bit chopped and changed there. There's probably still another two episodes of that, unfortunately, just uh, yeah, with that loss of the footage, but um, yeah, I can't do anything about it now. It's gone. But uh, hope you can get a rough gauge of what I'm trying to do here now. And uh, it'll slowly make sense as the uh, as the videos go on. I hope, fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, thanks guys. Make sure you uh, give us a like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, legends. You know